Happy Wednesday, beautiful souls. Happy new moon in Taurus to all of you. This is Shamama Hunting Owl with a new message for the twins for today, this week, I don't know, whatever, for what's happening right now. Um, and really it's whenever you're watching this video is when it's meant to be seen by you. So this is when the message will resonate with you. Um, I wanna start by always thanking my subscribers for your likes, your shares, your comments, your emails, um, both here on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, I also wanna thank everybody who has reached out for healing sessions, spiritual guidance, card readings, etc. Um, it's always a pleasure to work with you guys. So love to you all. Um, okay, so I wanna start by talking about what's going on. And really I wanna start by giving a huge amount of praise and love and um, just kudos all the way around to all of us on this journey who have been working so, so hard um, on doing our work and doing our healing and and really navigating this, this time where we are being accelerated, heavily, heavily accelerated and pushed through this process to to get to a place where we are ready to where we are preparing um and fully open in accepting our unions um and again union i talk about union there you know union within ourself union with our twin um our connection to our higher self this is not just about our divine counterpart it is about us fully first um, so you guys are doing amazing, amazing work, and I really just want to compliment all of you on that. Um, masculines and feminine alike, wow. Um, the messages that I have received lately from both the divine and from people I have spoken to in the twin community, you know, shit's happening in a big, beautiful way. Um, twins are coming together into union, reunion. Um, the healing that is going on is tremendous. The growth that people are having is just so amazing and so beautiful. So you guys really need to give yourselves a huge hug and a pat on the back and recognize how far you've come. Um, it's truly beautiful. It's truly inspiring. Um, okay, so let's talk about the new moon just super, super briefly. Um, new moon in Taurus. Today, tonight, last night, depending on where you are um, in the world. This is an energy of a little bit more stability, a little more staying power, a little more concrete, very earthly grounded. Um, this is our time. It's the manifest moon. It is our time to truly be the creators of our universe, to create our reality. Um, through our own divinity to to be able to manifest the things that we may still want to accomplish um taurus being an earth energy is about the physical 3d so abundance and prosperity in our 3d world financial abundance things like that this is a huge place for a lot of the twins right now is this financial abundance and stability and that's the energy we're coming into so so utilizing the ability to manifest tonight with this moon and really focus your intent on what it is that you still want to accomplish um, but seeing it again when you manifest, seeing it as you already have it accomplished, seeing it as it's happening already, that it is within you, visualizing yourself doing the things that make you feel abundant and prosperous and, and actually living the experience as you set the intention for that. Um, super important. I always talk about for the new moon for myself, I do a little sacred ritual, um, in which I, you know, create a sacred space, I burn some candles, I sage, I do all that stuff, um, and I write down my experience and that which I wish to manifest. And not that I hope for it to happen, but that it is an experience that is happening within me already. Um, I write that stuff out, I go outside, I read it to the universe, and then I set a fire and I burn it. 
um, offering that up to the divine. Um, so I recommend any of you who who are wanting to you know work in this manifest energy to utilize that you know get your crystals selenite wands are great in creating a sacred circle um, in an honored space for your intentions to be set so so calling in your angels etc really just connecting to your higher self so that's the Taurus moon um, we still have this Saturn Saturn in retrograde which oh God again the energies navigating these energies this roller coaster has been incredibly up and down very very quick um there's this whole karmic pattern that is associated with saturn in retrograde when you add that with the mercury in retrograde with people coming back again from your past um and these karmic patterns that saturn is bringing up it truly speaks of a time where I feel we are being tested in our growth, in our ability. And maybe tested is the wrong word. Maybe it's like an assessment, um, whatever you want to call it. But it's like these karmic cycles are coming back around for us to either show us where we still need to work or to show us that we have been successful in, in getting through that pattern and how we handle it and being able to break that pattern. Um, finally putting an end to that cycle. Um, I know for me personally, I've had some karmic people pop back up into my life lately and I kind of questioned it. I mean, people from many, many, many years ago and, and I really had to look at like, what the hell, what is this about? What do I need to examine in myself from this? How am I different from my from how I was many years ago? And how would I have handled this situation then? And how do I handle it now? Um, and it really has shown myself, my shown me the areas in which I have tremendously grown and healed and been able to work past who I was as to who I am now. Um, okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about, so continue. Okay, so just back on that just for a second is really keep looking at the patterns and the cycles that are coming up for you and and questioning what they mean for you what are they about what are you getting from this situation um, i'm going to share one more story quick before i move on and i had a call from one of our my beloved beloved twins um oh my god and and he fell back into a karmic cycle with a karmic partner um and and he was very confused and and it was all about coming to a place of understanding what the cycle holds for you why you chose or choose to play back into those old paradigms um you know and and really examining within what you're doing and how it serves your soul and if it's something that's not serving your soul then you got to get rid of it then it's time to break that cycle and stand in who you are now so um okay so enough on that so the next thing i wanted to talk about is and this is mostly first wave that i'm going to address at the moment i have been shown signs i have been given messages um that I've been attempting to weed through for the last couple of days. Um, and I've said, and I put myself out there and said, union is here and union is here. And I'm talking about not just ourself, our union with ourself, but with our twin. Um, twins, counterparts and beloveds are stepping up all over the place, coming back into people's lives. As I said, we are truly in the final descent. They have shown me the planes are coming in for landing. Okay, they've been showing this to me for over a month now. Um, this is the final descent. Um, there's another YouTube person who um, just did a video and it kind of confirms what, what I'm talking about is this doorway that has been opened for us to do our work, especially again for the first wave who are on this descent, are coming in for a landing, are really preparing heavily and that is why we are being accelerated so quickly is it is time 
this gateway that has been open since 2012, a little before that actually, but really fully since 2012, um, is starting to close. Quite simply, it's starting to close. We have been given our time, we have been given our chance to, to fully step in to our healing, to what this journey is about, and, and the door is closing. Okay, the landing gear is coming down, the tray tables are, tables are getting put up, the seats are up in their upright position, and the overhead bags are being stored. We are running out of time to finish what needs to be done before union can occur. And I don't want to, and I'm not saying this to scare anybody, I'm saying it as be forewarned. If there is still work to do, if there is still karmic patterns, relationships, things that need to go, now is push time. You know, we are ready to get on the field and, and step into this journey in, in the biggest way and come into our full mission to help everyone else. Um, and I just can't stress it enough how important it is right now, this time, and that you use it effectively. You know, um, I want you all to sit and ask yourself that if your twin came to your front door today and knocked and said, I'm here, I'm ready, are you ready? Are you ready in your physical 3D world to have them step in? Or do you still have karmic relationships that need to end, financial things that need to get put into place? Um, you know, are you still angry? Are you still holding grudges? Are you still not standing in your own authentic self and your own self-worth? Really look at what would you do if they walked in and said, I'm in, I'm here, here's my bags, I'm ready. Where would you be? And really take that to heart and examine where you're at. Um, Cause that's the true testament. Are you ready? Um, okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is unconditional love. Unconditional love for self, for our twin, for humanity. Um, and what was shown to me, and I kind of took some notes, and I don't really know if they really make sense to everybody, um, but, but what I was shown and what I experienced is that once we completely understand that our twin, this other human being, is completely and totally our mirror, ourselves. They are the other piece of us. When we see them, we see ourselves. And when we really understand and think about them and how we feel about them, and understand that all that is is a direct reflection of how we feel about ourselves and that we step into a place of not finding flaws in them um, flaws that would be 3d flaws okay um, that those things don't actually exist that anything in them that we would term as a flaw or a brokenness is truly what makes them unique and special and beautiful. And, and that that beauty that, of the pain and the scars that they carry is just a reflection of the beauty of the pain and the scars that we carry for ourselves. Um, and when we can have complete love, unconditional love, for the pain and the things and their darknesses that they hold in addition to their light and understand that in feeling, when we feel that pain and that darkness that they carry and those scars and those hurts, that there's just this flood of love and that that love is not just for them, but it's about our pains and hurts and flaws. And that if we can love them that much through their darkness, that we can love ourselves that much through our own darkness. Um, 
it brings us into a place of just complete acceptance, okay? And it allows us to completely accept ourselves. Um, when this, when we get to this place of complete acceptance and love for our twin and ourself, okay, that is when we have this light body merging that happens. And what was shown to me was was sort of an, and bear with me as I try to explain this because I get these visions and these visuals in my head and and they're kind of hard to communicate and I suck at drawing, so I can't really draw it out. So if you can visualize your light body, just a glowing frame of a body of light. And if you can visualize you you yourself, your light body lying down on a bed or on the floor and seeing your divine masculine counterpart or your counterpart, okay, masculine, feminine, whoever you are watching this video, your beloved, and their light body kind of sort of levitating above you. And as you come into this place of complete acceptance, there is this merging of the light bodies into one that they still have their distinct characteristics of masculine and feminine, but they are, they are melded into one being, one light body with two, two like separate bodies, but into one. And I don't know if I'm really being clear or if that even makes sense, but, but what happens is as this merger happens, as this integration happens and our light body becomes one, that is us becoming one with ourselves, but also coming into full union in a higher dimension with our twin, with their beloved soul. So, so as I see this image, I see this beautiful infinity symbol that flows around this, this, this light body of merger. And, and it's almost like a sharing of a breath. It's, it's, and I'm gonna talk about in another video that I think I'm gonna make, or I might actually do a webinar on this infinity breathing that I've been being shown. And it's sort of like breathing in the infinity symbol in and throughout your body and coming back around and it encompassing yourself and your twin as a whole. And as this happens, the next vision that, that I was shown is literally this merged light body being raised up into this divine light, being drawn, being pulled up and anchored in to the grid that we talk about, taking, literally stepping in and embodying and taking our place, our divine spot on the grid in order for us to do our next step. It's, it's that activation, it's that stepping into our place, like we are finally there, we are locked in, like we're not going anywhere, like it's literally like taking the outlet, the plug, um, and putting it into the wall, like, like that connection has finally been made, and now it's not just plugged in, but it's like locked into place, like I actually saw it, like, like this locking mechanism, like tie it in, and, and my twin and my own soul body, and not just mine, but other people's taking their place and standing in their place on this grid and just emanating this beautiful light for all of us. Um, so, so, but what I want to go back to just say is that until you come into a place of total acceptance in who you are in the love for yourself, in the love for your twin, this union, this melding can't take place. Um, and, and as you get closer to that place where you can feel your twin's pain and embrace that pain as a beauty in them and something wondrous and glorious and honor that and feel that beautiful loving connection to how special they are which in fact is how special you are 
that is what's empowering the divine masculine to come in fully to this merger. Um, I was also shown a vision of like the DNA structure, this double helix again, the masculine side and the feminine side and, and the helix coming together and then the, the twisting of, of that, that DNA, that that is the true physical merger because we're, we're, we're not just working on our, our spiritual body. We're working on our spiritual body, our physical body, our emotional body, our mental body. Um, there are all these levels that these, these connections need to be made. So you can't just change something on emotional level and think that that's it because it has to be fully integrated into our emotional body, our mental body, our physical bodies, and our spiritual bodies. Um, so there are multi-layers to this process. And, and that's why this shit takes time to get through, okay? Um, that's why it takes, you know, this integration period. Stuff just, you know, stuff happens overnight and quickly, but then there's, there's these ebbs and flows to it because each piece has to fall into alignment for, for this full integration to happen. Um, yeah. So I think that that makes sense. I know it makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you guys. Um, and again, I'm just sharing my messages about my journey and the people that I work with and talk to. This doesn't have to resonate with everybody. This doesn't have to be anybody else's story. This is my story that I choose to share. Um, and the story of those parts of my soul tribe that, that I am honored to share with you all. Um, so a lot of that was first wave stuff. So second and third wave, what's happening? Um, the gateway is not closing for you. I don't want you guys to start panicking. You're like, oh fuck, I'm new on this journey and how am I gonna get all this done? You've got time. That whole part is really a really important and strong message for the first waivers. Second waivers, I am really finding doubt, fear coming up in a big way, wanting to engage in karmic patterns and relationships again, um, finding themselves in their twin, turning their back again. You're in the place you're supposed to be. As long as you are doing your work, as long as you are connecting to the divine, as long as you are moving forward, keeping faith, you are in the place you need to be. Yes, moments of doubt will happen. Moments of fear will happen. We are still a 3D vessel. We still have ego. I don't know that that will ever go away completely, but there will always be that recognition after we heal that, hey, wait, this is coming up. This is ego and boom, I know how to deal with this. So, but what, I, okay. But going back to what I was saying, I'm sorry, um, is that, it's addressing those doubts. It's addressing those fears. It's keeping faithful. It's going, you know what? I recognize this as a fear. I recognize this as a doubt. I know my truth. I know I'm authentic. I know I'm doing my work and I am just going to continue to keep working for me. And regardless of where you are in any of the waves of this journey, this is always about working for yourself first, always doing your work first, your healing first. Um, and then holding your twin and your union so close to your heart, like this very, very, very special treasure that you truly do not want to share with anyone. I mean, you do want to share it because you're excited and you've got all this love and light about you and you just want the world to know how much love and joy is in your life. But there's a very important element of this journey that is about truly keeping your union, your details, personal, private, and sacred. And that's one lesson I learned this week in a big way. Um, this is about your union, your love story, um, your journey. 
And until it fully manifests into whatever it is you envision for your journey, your union, it is to be held at the highest level of privacy and sacredness. If you're out there spouting all your business on social media and and gushing all over, I wouldn't advise it, okay? You do what you want, but I feel like it's not, I feel like my personal feelings, it is not in your best interest. If you need help, if you need guidance, that is wonderful. Reach out to a person, but spreading all of your stuff out for the world, as someone shared with me the other day, it dilutes the beauty of your experience because you share it here and you share a piece there and you share a piece there and now you're left with less or or a dilution of that pure love energy. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, hold it sacred, hold it to your heart, make it your treasure, make it this beautiful light in your life and, and share it sparingly, share it sparingly guys. Um, okay, so I think I blah, 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 blah enough. I am going to just pull one card um, or whatever comes out from the Gaia Oracle. Tony Carmine Salerno, beautiful, one of my most favorite decks ever. Um, and let's see what message we get or messages we get. I didn't really have much of a plan. I tried to pull cards for a full reading. And I really wasn't feeling it today, so this is what I was guided to do. Um, so let's see what Gaia has to share with us for this new moon and the upcoming next few days with the energies, what message, what divine messages do you have? that will help enable the twins for some insight on this experiences and how to handle things. Let's see what we get. So I don't always shuffle on camera because sometimes it takes a little while, you guys. So just bear with me. Silence, I know. Hang on, you guys. Okay. And what we got is the Zen Garden. Okay? Just sit with the card for a moment. Focus on the picture. Absorb the energy. And it says inner sanctuary. I'm going to get my glasses here. Pull out my little book. And what is the number of this card? Is a 38. Um, and that's 11. And that is always, as we know, the divine twin number. And let's see. Zen Garden. Life is full of ups and downs, a constant ebb and flow between war and peace. Everything has a positive and negative charge. Harmony and disharmony, order and chaos, clarity, confusion, common conflict are all partners. In our physical world, we cannot have one without the other. Yet, like all of us, you sometimes wish that things could change. Why can't we just live in peace? Well, the answer is that peace is possible, but you can only find it from within. The first step is to accept the world as it is. Just let things be. Trust that everything happens for a reason and that there is a higher purpose to all things. Now become aware of your breath. Let it guide you to a place of peace and light, a beautiful garden within the golden chamber of your heart. It is here within your inner sanctuary 
that you will find the peace you seek. Peace is only possible when there is peace within our hearts. When you are able to find peace, even in the midst of chaos, then you are a true master. The affirmation that goes with this card says, I accept and love the world as it is. I trust that there is a higher order to everything. I find solace in my sanctuary of my heart. I move my awareness within. I am the peace I seek. So again, this is about really honestly and truthfully finding that love within, finding that peace inside of you, going into that space of merging your own divine masculine and feminine into one stable light body, soul body, divine higher self. Um, it's, it's fully accepting the light and the dark, the chaos, the conflict with the peace and the love for ourselves, for the world, for our twin. Um, so with that, guys, I think I'm going to end. Um, again, thank you all. Have a wonderful, beautiful week. Um, if you need me, you know how to find me, www.shamamahuntingowl.com. Schedule sessions. You can do everything right there. Um, and, and yeah, and enjoy this moon. Really use this energy and this time wisely. Um, yeah, so I am sending you so much love and light. Gratitude and blessings. Always beautiful souls. Um, I love you all, and we'll talk really soon. Mwah. Bye, guys.